Here's Dr. Schwartz's program a couple of years ago, four and a half years ago. And I saw and I continue to see how what were seemingly insurmountable barriers to my speaking fell away. But it happened very, very slowly. It was not a quick fix. Speaking situations, which many people take for granted, seem to be almost impossible for me at certain times. For example, speaking to people, or especially to my, my family members, sitting around a dinner table, speaking on the telephone, speaking to someone I had not met or seen in a long time. These are just a few examples. I just like to end by saying that I have a lot more to accomplish. I, as, as Don had mentioned before, even though I, I feel it, even though I've been taking the program for a number of years, I have not uh, overcome you know, all situations that I have, you know, find difficult. <coughs> but uh, I'm inspired to go on and, and propel to keep going based on the achievements I have seen in the past. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Bob McCall. Bob. Thank you, Don. I'm 47. I've been stuttering for about 40 years. I first uh, began stuttering about the age of seven or eight. I think I developed a fear of certain words or consonants, and then that evolved into a general fear. There are several different types of stuttering. I am what we call a closet stutterer, in that most of this time I could mask the stuttering by the use of substitution by momentum words and various little tricks which perhaps much of the time I could disguise it. The problem was that on certain seemingly random occasions I would not have the ability to introduce myself introduce my wife or situations like that. About three years ago I read an article about Don Kaufman in fact and his experiences through the Schwartz airflow technique and I decided to give it a try The interesting thing about the problem of stuttering is that a person isn't crazy or have something mentally wrong. It's a physiologically based phenomenon. About 3% of the population, as Dennis mentioned, have a propensity to concentrate stress in the larynx. The effect of that 
is to lock your vocal cords in certain people perhaps one-third to one-half of that three percent so statistically there's a chance of a person becoming a stutterer in my case because of my closet <coughs> stuttering it's been quite difficult to overcome it because I can easily fall back into the artifices of substitution and the like. I'll give you a funny example of some of the tricks that uh, a person uses without a uh, tool such as the airflow technique. I was a naval officer and had to report at muster uh, before a very large group. And I was a company commander. It was C Company. I had trouble with S's <laughs> or C's. So I devised tricks for getting around it. I would say, good morning, sir, C Company. All present are accounted for. The only trouble with that was that I got hung up on saying, good. <laughs> so I then developed an artifice where I slushed over the good and said, it's good morning, sir. <laughs> the trouble with that was that I was using the same S sound that I was avoiding with the C in the first instance. <laughs> The good thing about the airflow technique is that it has given me a tool that now I can say, Bob McAuliffe, or Good Morning, or C Company. This is the first time that Ellen spoken for a group. And Alan, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> about my speech. However, it was not till in junior high after a few embarrassing incidents that I decided not to talk aloud in class. I spent my four years of high school rarely saying a word in class. I started each new class by approaching each teacher and explaining my speech problem. I asked them to avoid calling on me in class. They pretty much granted my request. Some teachers called on me occasionally for some one answer questions. <coughs> there was one situation when I had to read a story in English class. It couldn't be avoided. The teacher was very supportive and helped me handle the situation. I survived that reading, but my fears of talking aloud in front of the group was there. Now it has been almost four years since graduation and about a year and a half 
since I've been out of the workshop. I wish i known about the airflow technique when I was in high school. It would have lessened my fears of speaking aloud and made it possible for me to, sh to have shared some of my thoughts throughout school. Since the workshop, I have spoken aloud only at the weekly meetings, but this is the first time I have spoken in front of a large group of people. Thank you. I think it's about, what is it, uh, four, to one. Uh, four to one, and we, we usually have perhaps two or three women in our group, and um, Ellen has made tremendous progress. We all feel great today for you, Ellen. <laughs> the next young man is graduating from high school <coughs> this month. And we'll be starting college in September. I would like him to say a few things about his experiences. Sure. Mr. Jeff Adams. Hi. I've been in the workshop now for a little over two years. But before that, I couldn't utter a word. I had many problems in school, especially in the grammar school, where no one understood me. I got little or no support from my grammar school teachers. I remember on one occasion, a teacher mocked me in class in front of the whole entire student class when I got up to read something. That really tore me apart. When I got to high school, it became worse. I was very shy and I didn't make too many friends very quickly. Fortunately for myself, I learned about the airflow technique and Dr. Schwartz. My family encouraged me to attend the workshop and from there, I've been making steady progress. I now have um, a large number of friends. I am not afraid to get up in front of the classroom and make a speech or read a term paper like I've done last month. I am getting out more. I tell every person who doesn't understand the way I talk, I tell them that I stutter and that I am in a therapy where I send tapes back and forth to a monitor and I attend a self-help group every week. In conclusion, I'd like to say that um, although I may sound good right now, I still have a very long way to go. The man behind the camera was a stutterer, and I think he liked to 
say a few words. While Jeff, if you could. Hi. My name is Mark Kleiman. I took the took the workshop uh, approximately three years ago. I kept it up after the workshop for approximately two months. I sent back tapes back and forth. While I was doing that, I was doing pretty well. Um, I didn't stutter, and I was under control. But I got lazy, and I stopped doing it. And sure enough, approximately a month after that, I started going into pitfalls. I would have episodes where I would stutter a lot for, and they would last approximately a month or so. And then I would get a little better and a little worse and better and worse. Well, after about, after about a year of that, or a little more, I didn't get any better. I just, got, I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. So I realized I'd really better buckle down and really start working. I went back to the workshop in the city, and I took a, I took a booster session. And then I joined the Englewood First Amendment Club, which helped me a lot. And I'm back into practicing again my stuttering. The, I mean, I'm back practicing again, <laughs> getting out of stuttering. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that to control your stuttering, you have to keep working at it. You, people tend to get fooled by doing very well the first month or two. And then they stop practicing, and then they figure they're fine. If you... You must keep on practicing always, and I will be practicing for the rest of my life. I will never be a cured stutterer. I will just be a controlled stutterer. And Again, uh, any of you are welcome to attend the meeting if you'd like to see. Rick, would you like to? Thank you. You have heard the members of my club, all of the people who just spoke, and some of the members of other clubs in New Jersey. Elliot is from the First Amendment of Old Bridge, New Jersey. Ben is from the On Target speech group in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Ronnie Reel is uh, from the Linwood, uh, Lincroft, Lincroft, New Jersey speech club where he works with Sabra Gribben and uh, in that uh, office. The key for all of us, though, has been the support and practice. You ask, well, what kind of practice? Well, each of us have practices that we do at home alone. Reading aloud, descriptive exercise, comparison exercises, and others that I'll be happy to, or we all would be happy to, discuss with you. When we get together <coughs> in a group we do other exercises but it's also an opportunity to ask questions of each other and relate experiences a meeting normally lasts about two hours our club in Englewood meets weekly Old Bridge meets every other week every week and the meeting generally follows a format that allows us to practice a wide range of things. Normally, we start out with introductions. 
saying your name, Rick Bauer, in my case, is one of the hardest things any of us has to say. It's something we can't substitute, we can't change, I can't become someone else. And if I did, as Bob explained, I'd stutter on that. We, we practice saying those things which happen every day. What is our spouse's name? Our children? Where do we live? What's our telephone number? Where do we work? Questions that come up every day. We give in introductions, and then we practice them again in an exercise called toughening. That is where we throw these questions quickly at each other, and the person asked has to stop, take time to can gain control, saying, this is my technique. I'm in charge. I don't have to answer on your terms. I have to answer on my terms. And then you give the answer. What time is it? 3.42. Then we have prepared speeches, impromptu speeches, <coughs> reading aloud. We sometimes go to malls, visit restaurants, and we also improvise. For example, we have often used the game in our uh, group of Mad Libs. You might be familiar. That's the game that has the blank spaces in the story, and someone fills in a word without knowing what the story is. So the person reading it has got humor and surprise and all kinds of uh, things mixed into that. We've also played Trivial Pursuit and other things that require us to speak. But that is what we do during our meetings. All the time supporting, encouraging, helping, assisting in any way we can each member there to use whatever technique they're supposed to use because when they use it look what happens i would like to share this afternoon one of the things we do at our meeting and i think you will all agree with me at the end of most of our meetings in old bridge we haven't done this in Englewood but we're gonna start is we present an award I think all of you will agree with me that the speaker of the day the speaker's ribbon goes to Ellen Muntner find us at about 5 to 8 in the coffee shop. We, um, we have a new room in the new center they have there. I'm very comfortable with a speaker's podium. That's every Tuesday? Every Tuesday. Yes. I noticed you have one smoker in your group. Does that interfere with your speech? Smoking? No, actually, uh, it helps me in a way. I could watch my flows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How is how young can a child be to benefit from this kind of technique? Uh, I know that. Uh, one person here was very young and he got in, but uh, is that very unusual or what is the success with young children with eight, nine-year-olds? Could I answer that? Yes. Well, 
we have a nine-year-old now in the Oldwood group and the Overwood group, and uh, I would imagine they have to understand what they have to do. No matter how old they are, they could be three. If they understand that they have to relax the muscles in the throat, they're okay. If they don't understand that, then it's no good. We have 18-year-olds who don't understand that yet. But the motivation to practice and all that, is that practical for a, for a young child? The uh, fluency is the motivation, I think. If it works, you're going to be motivated to practice. If not, you're not going to be motivated. If I could just answer that uh, also by adding, most of our contact with speech therapists seems to show that from about age eight on, uh, these techniques seem to be more applicable. Someone younger than that, we don't have enough experience, they and we don't have enough experience with. However, I do know that there is a, a therapist on Long Island who has been trying airflow with younger age children, and we're, we're hoping to hear from her in the very near future. But that about age eight, in our group, uh, groups, Lincroft probably has the majority of younger age. What What is the age range? Oh, it ranges from 9 till 18, I guess, right out of high school. All right.